Hey, how's it going? My name is Luke Stokes with EOS DAC, and I'm really excited to show you a script that I put together to make it much, much easier to create your own DAC on the Jungle Test Network. Now, I did a previous video about this, and it took about, about an hour and a half to run through the entire thing and copy and paste all the stuff. So now I've got it set up as a script, so it'll be much, much easier. It should hopefully take about 15 minutes. So I'm pretty excited about that. It kind of makes it a little simpler. Um, let's go ahead and jump right in. I also want to show you a little bit about our uh, new website here, which I'm pretty proud of. You can see here uh, our team put this together. We talk about why we could use your vote as a block producer. We talk about why you might want to join the DAC and be uh, a member and participate with what we're doing. And also why you might want to launch your own DAC. And that's what we're going to be doing today with this little example. So please definitely join our Discord. And that's like the number one way to get a hold of us. You can find it right here. And we'd love to have you participate in supporting our community as well. If you create your own DAC and you build your own token, please keep some of those back to airdrop onto our community. They would certainly appreciate it for providing all this open source software to you and your community for free. So jumping right in, uh, this is the repo here, the DAC factory. And eventually this is all gonna be done in a much, much easier way. It's gonna have, have a nice user interface where you could just go ahead and click through to create the DAC and launch your token and all that kind of stuff. But for now, I've got it as a shell script. It's a lot easier than it was, but you know we're just continuing to iterate and innovate and move forward. So the first thing you wanna do is run this build EOS tools script. And all that does basically is kind of set up your EOS build version so you can have your tools like Cleos and stuff. And it will also set up your EOS CDT, which is the uh, you know, toolkit for developing and um, you know, compiling your smart contracts, things like that. So that'll take probably about 45 minutes or so. So you definitely want to set aside time for doing that. And once you have that going, then you'll just want to set up your uh, key server here. Go ahead and get that running. And then let's see here, get another tab going, okay. And then you can run the DAC factory. So this, the hope of this is that it can make things just much, much simpler for you. And we're gonna go through that right now. So the name of this one, we'll call it the DAC factory 24, I think is the next number I'm on. <laughs> I don't have an EOS account, so I'm gonna go ahead and say no and it's gonna go ahead and generate some keys for me. So there we go. Now this is just on Jungle Test Network, so these keys don't really matter for anything. Verify that we have the key. Let me go ahead and save this out here. This is our public key. Now as far as managing real private keys, absolutely be making sure that you're using a password manager or some kind of secure mechanism for keeping those keys private. Very, very important. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and jump into jungle test network here and we're going to create a new account using that key that public key that we just created and we'll call it DAC factory 24 and in a real situation you'd want to have different owner and active keys as well but we're just doing this here as a quick tutorial so we'll worry about that as much I have verify your public key. Create a DAC factory 24. All right. Now, one thing it says is hey, you want to hit the uh, faucet here. And this is just a way to get more EOS tokens on the Jungle Test Network. Because we'll need a lot of tokens for divvying out RAM to all the new accounts we're creating. So, this goes ahead and creates a wallet for us. It imports our private key. And then right here, just to kind of make things even simpler, you can actually set up an eight character kind of prefix. So this will create all the accounts we need, the custodian account, the authority account, the multi-sig account, the token account, the owner account, and all that kind of stuff. So we'll go ahead and do that. Oh, wait, I made a mistake there. That has to be a yes. Let me kill this and start it over again. It's the second time I've done that there. Deck factory. For yes, we already have the account. Let's paste in that private key. Paste in that public key. 
And this is the DAC Factory 24. All right, so we already have all that. Yes, I would like to create it. I'm gonna call it DAC Factory 24. So now it just asks us to create these different accounts. It'll, if the accounts are already created, it will go ahead and just move forward. But after it uh, created the first account, now it's like, hey, we're gonna need some more EOS. So once again, we go in here and hit the faucet. For that custodian account. And then we're gonna create the auth account. And the token account. The owner account, which will hold the funds for the DAC. And then if you have a situation where you need like an actual legal entity to do contracts for the DAC, we, uh, we found that we needed a service provider. So if you need to create a service provider, that's what the, this is here. So all actual like interactions that governments are interested in, that kind of stuff, go through the service provider. Now we create the multi-sig account and the worker proposals account. And now it's gonna go ahead and compile the different contracts and set them all up. All right, so the token symbol we want. Now we're gonna create our, our token for our DAC. I'll just call it DAC FAC. And we will issue a million of those. Create a million and issue a million. And now it's compiling the different contracts, custodian contract, and setting that all up. So if you wanna get a little bit more information on what the different contracts are, you can actually go here to our website, right here under smart contracts, there's a whole description of each one of the different contracts and what they're used for and all the different actions that they have. Uh, so yeah, plenty of reading there for you. Once it sets up all the different contracts, then it, you can actually configure the, the configuration for the proposal contract. So I've, in this example, we're setting it up with five custodians. And so that's kind of done with that in mind. So if you want, you can just hit enter to go through the defaults. This kind of is just figuring out like how many people have to approve a proposal, what, uh, what's the approval threshold. And some of this is still being worked out. We're still kind of working on this contract, but um, this is what the settings are for now. And we'll just jump through that pretty quick. There we go. And then here you put in your own a link, a web link to your own constitution that you have. Uh, for now, we're just going to go ahead and use the EOS DAC constitution as a placeholder. So you can just hit enter for that default. But generally, you, your own DAC should have its own constitution, which is an agreement between your members on how you're all going to treat each other, basically. Um, this is how many tokens you need to lock up in order to, you know, submit yourself as a custodian candidate. Uh, how many votes each member is going to have. In our case, you get two votes because we're only doing five custodians. Um, how long between elections, so it's seven days. You know what the initial percentage is to launch the DAC. We have that set to 15. And then you need an ongoing quorum for 10. How many custodians are, are yeah, they have different uh, levels of action. So you have high, medium, and low. So high would be four out of five. Need to approve it. Medium would be three, low would be two. And then this would be when you do stake those tokens, how long are they locked up? We have it set for 90 days. These are all things you basically can configure. And then the custodian pay. Uh, that says EOS, but I think I've got this script set up right now to actually pay out of your, your actual token there, right there, your DAC fact token. So now this is going ahead and setting up different things here. Um, one thing it asks for is the logo. And I've already, I think I've already got a logo in there. Let me double check here. Yeah, I've got this logo sitting right here. I'm gonna go ahead and just, but if you wanted to, you could you know, put your own logo in there, drop the file name in there, and then we'll modify things slightly just to, uh, you know, gotta show your own logo. That's one of the things people care about, right? And this is going ahead and building the member client now. And again, if you don't have all the different dependencies needed to run Kazar or like Node.js or any of that kind of stuff, uh, you'll need to get those set up when you try to run some of these. You might get some errors if you don't have it all set up correctly. 
All right, now we're setting up all the permissions, high, medium, low, setting up, you know, resigning all the other contracts. So you can actually see that happening here. If we go and look at uh, DAC Factory, let's see, 24 auth. You can see it's setting up all these permissions just like that, which is pretty cool. So all that stuff is set up, and if you go to like the, let's say like the main custodian account, you can see that the permissions have already been updated to use DAC, fac DAC factory authentication. It has the transfer permission, all that kind of cool stuff. Time delayed, all that's been set up for you automatically, which is pretty sweet. All right, so now if you want to like get the DAC up and running quickly, this script can actually go through and create five custodians for you automatically. So we'll go ahead and hit yes there. And we say, yeah, we're ready to get a private key. So go ahead and copy that there. Store that securely somewhere. It just asks to verify it. And then here's the public key for that. Ask to verify that. And then, of course, we're going to need a lot more RAM to create all these new accounts. So we go ahead and back to the faucet. And the faucet only lets you do it, I think, every 12 hours. So I just kind of rotate through to the different accounts. This, we're using the token account there, and then this one uses the owner account. Just kind of quick way to get up and running. All right, there we go. And that transfers it over. All right. So now we're going through here and we're creating all these different custodian accounts. We're actually registering them with the DAC, with the kind of agreed terms of the constitution that we have. And we're um, having them stake the appropriate tokens to be a custodian candidate. And then we're having them kind of register as a candidate and vote for themselves. So once that's all done, we should have the required number of custodian candidates and we should be able to call a new period, which will actually launch the DAC. So yeah, this is going through. We're on number four of five now. And again, in a real DAC, you, you probably wouldn't want to create all these you know, test accounts. You'd have actually your own community members that would be involved. But here, just on the jungle test net, it's nice to actually see it. All right, so there we go. We just ran new period. So now the DAC has actually launched. And you can go ahead and hit yes if you want, and that will save all those variables in this file. Now, you definitely don't want to keep this file lying around because it has private keys and stuff in it. If you're really serious about that, you'd want to uh, you'd want to obviously encrypt that file and put it somewhere safe, or you could just kill it. But now that we have that running, now we can actually check out our DAC. So there's a bunch of little pieces that go in go into this. So the first I'm going to show you is the action scraper. So our script went ahead in here and actually under the watchers, what this is going to be doing, it's going to be checking the chain for different data that it wants to put in MongoDB. So if you look at this here, we've already modified this based on the script to, you know, for our different settings. So that's all good. But before I do that, I just realized I'm going to get MongoDB running. To get that running. And then we go ahead and we fire up our watcher. So we want to do a custodian watcher. So now that that's running, open up another window here. And the next piece we want to make sure we're running is the member client API. A member client API basically says, okay, now that we're scraping the chain with the action scraper and we're putting stuff in MongoDB, how are we going to actually get it back out again and make it available to the member client? So what we have right here is another modified config right here. So we've got our own little MongoDB database custom for what we're doing. And we can just run node API endpoint. Now you'd probably want to use PM2 or something like that to manage your different node services if you were running this uh, on an actual server but I'm just giving you an example here. And then last but not least, the actual member client itself. This is the Kazar system. 
And to run this, we just type Kazar Dev. And uh, I'll take just a second to boot up. And if all went correctly, we should have our own member client DAC up and running. Boom, there we go. DAC Factory 23 is up and running. We've got our own logo in there. I've actually got this set up to turn on all the dev tools, but you could go in here and you could, for example, like, you know, change your styles around. There we go, we'll change them around a little bit. You could actually save that out. Yes, if you want to grab the, uh, you could log it and save it out there. But yeah, that's, here it is. That is our custodian candidate, custodian board. And there it is, all pretty cool. So there you go, that is your running DAC. Now if I imported my keys into Scatter, I could go ahead and log in here. I could set up my profile, I could do all that kind of cool stuff. So yeah, there you go. That is the DAC factory. Hope you appreciate that. Uh, hope it'll save you a bunch of time and be something cool. And I, I think this is the future. I think businesses, startups, you know, not-for-profits, not even governments are gonna start using DAC technology because I really think this provides a mechanism for global nonviolent consensus and a way for you know people to come together as communities and create value for themselves create their own tokens create their own systems of governance without any violence or any threats and it's just it's a really really cool thing i hope you think so too take care